Matthew, we're hoping that you saw none of Dan's love fest. Look, he's got anyway, a we on. are joined now by Super Bowl champion quarterback Matthew Stafford. Thanks so much for being with us. And you know, we just did hear about Dan being such a hype man for you this entire season. What's your reaction to the love that you've got here from Dan Orlovsky? <laughs> what a question. Uh, I appreciate it. That's my guy. Um, Dan, uh, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of years with Dan, spent some time with him, man. He's a, a good friend of mine, but uh, he definitely set the bar high for me. I couldn't fail if he was going to put his neck out there like that. So I'm glad, uh, glad we got it done. All right, way to not prove me wrong. Um, I'll ask, in Detroit, during all, like, the team dark years and the struggle, was there ever doubt in your own ability? Like, did you ever start to doubt, am I good enough or would I be good enough to, you know, win a Super Bowl or have that type of performance? Um, you know, I think uh, that's a great question. Um, I don't think so. You know, I think, uh, you know, for the most part, I always knew that I was good enough to get this thing done. It's just um, sometimes you don't get those opportunities. And I was just lucky enough this year to get that opportunity, uh, play with a great group of players, uh, great coaching staff, and, and it all kind of came together. But these things aren't easy to, you know, to get done. We still needed, you know, things to go our way, breaks to happen, but I was so happy to capitalize on it and, and get it done. Hey, take, take me into, like, some of the conversation with Sean this year. You know, I think that there was some form of a philosophical evolution or change in your offense, like midseason, maybe week 10-plus. Was there, and if, the, if that is the case, what was it? Like, what was the main thing? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we, we were constantly talking, and, and the biggest thing is you guys know that playing an NFL season, your roster changes throughout the year. I mean, you know, whether it's injuries or guys moving on, whatever it is, uh, you know, we, we battled some injuries this year with guys. And, and um, so that thing kind of has to always be in flux. You have to be able to figure out, hey, who do we have available this week and how can we go win the game? And, uh, you know, we battled with COVID. We battled with all those things. So I was always talking with Sean. And then, um, you know, I think going into this game, you know, he says, you know, we're talking during the week. And he's like, hey, if, if there's ever a time, we're just going to put the ball in your hands. And, uh, you know, if we need to go try to get it done that way, we try to get it done that way. And, and uh, that time came and we were able to pull through and, and get it done. Yeah, those game-winning drives have become synonymous with your postseason, ultimately winning a Super Bowl. Mina Kimes and Brian Clark are also here, Matthew. I'm going to throw it over to Mina to ask a question first. Yeah, so Matthew, obviously we've talked a lot about the Super Bowl. Um, and really the change from the moment OBJ got hurt, you guys go punt, 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 you know, there's a field goal thrown in there, and then the game-winning drive. And we've broken down that drive a lot on this show. I want to know from your perspective, from an X's and O's perspective, what changed on that drive that allowed you guys to do what you did? Yeah, I mean, losing O was huge. Um, you know, they were doubling Cooper really every third down for the most part the whole game. And, uh, you know, O was getting the one-on-ones, and we, we kind of felt like that was going to maybe be a possibility going into the game. Um, you know, so O was winning big early for us, which was awesome. Um, and then when he went down, um, the doubles, you know, continued to happen, and we just missed on some other opportunities for some other plays. So uh, the last drive – um, Sean did a great job of playing with a bunch of tempo, calling those plays uh, in no huddle fashion, which I think, you know, as a defensive player, it's harder to communicate um, when the offense is going fast and harder to set some of those doubles and get the matchups that you want. So, um, you know, that was a, a great thing that Sean did that really, you know, upped the tempo and pushed the pace for us, um, you know, and got us some of those chances where we were able to get Coop in some zone coverage looks, able to manipulate some underneath defenders and, uh, you know, get him the rock. <laughs> what a freaking hey, smirk. Matthew, you said, uh, you said early on in the year that you wanted to have these big moments. You wanted to have the football in your hands in the moments that really make legends and build legacies. You were your best when all the chips were on the line in the playoffs. What is it about you? What is it about your game, your skill set, or your mindset that allows you to elevate in those late critical football moments that pushed your teams to win throughout the playoffs? I mean, I think the biggest thing for mindset is you can't be afraid to fail. You know, you got to go out there and chase greatness and not and not be afraid of the results. Plenty of those games in my life, uh, you know, I've thrown an uh, interception or an incomplete pass in one of those, cru you know, crucial mo uh, moments, clutch moments, and uh, it didn't work out for us, right? But uh, you got to keep firing away. You got to keep throwing the rock. And uh, you know, I have so much trust in my teammates and guys who go out there and make plays. Um, you got to be you got to be fearless in those moments. And I think that's the mindset that I try to take. And I think our team. Um, rallied around that and made some big time plays to help us win the game. I mean, you got to be a little bit scared to throw a no looker with the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, was, uh, nah, I, I mean, I've obviously seen hundreds of those, um, and I know physically, like, you can't describe them. But th just 
for people listening, like what goes through your mind mentally in that moment when you go, mm. here comes one of these no looks? Because it has to be a thought of, here it comes, I'm going to stay there and just trust it. Like Oof. what goes through your mind in that? Yeah, you know, I caught that snap, uh, saw that Vaughn was coming down into three hook and, and um, knew it was going to be a tough play for that coverage, but also knew that, we, you know, we needed some yards. And uh, so at that point, I'm just doing everything I can to try to put him on the player I don't want to throw the football to at that moment. I want to throw it to Coop, who's, you know, running in behind him there to, to make a big play for us. Uh, so kind of feeling him, trying to move him as much as I can. There's a little half hitch in there where I'm yeah. just confirming that he's moving and then, uh, you know, cutting it loose to a good spot. And Cooper ran in there and made a play. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.